What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Fudge Mop. It's Scott here, and today I'm going to talk all about our Fallout 76 beta experience so far. With only one beta session left to go and over 20 hours in the game, I feel like we have a pretty good feel for it. Unlike before at the Greenbrier event, Michael only had three hours with the game, but now we have some solid experience with it. My character is level 27 currently, and we've completed quite a bit of the main quest. We've also spent the last few sessions doing some side quests. As a little disclaimer before we get into it, of course this video is opinionated and based entirely on our beta experience of over 20 hours. Also, I'm not really going to delve into the whole technical side of things and how it runs and stuff like that because that kind of stuff will probably get fixed and I want to focus this discussion more on the game itself and the gameplay. We'll also be making Fallout 76 content as you could expect from us. We are planning to give this game a really fair go and see all that it has to offer, so I feel like we will have a much better grasp of the game after we have completed all of the quests and content that there is to do, but for the meantime, this video will be addressing just all our current feelings and thoughts about the game, particularly areas that we think need improvement or fixing. So first off, let's talk about one of the best things in the game, the physical world. I'm talking the amount and variety of weapons, the variety of cool enemies, the environments, the land itself. All of this aesthetically looks really cool. The map is really fun to just look at and find places that are beautiful beautiful, quaint, or downright creepy. We entered a Wendigo cave and fought a tough Wendigo boss, and it was such a sick atmosphere. It's just a fun map to explore and just to look at. However, the big caveat to this for us so far is while aesthetically everything looks cool, the quests and things to do in it are rather stale a lot of the time. Many of the quests that you receive involve standard fetch quest kind of stuff, go here, get this, listen to this holotape, kill this creature. Now I'm not going to pretend that the mainline games don't have these kind of quests, all RPGs do, but the difference is the reason to do so, the motivation. In other Fallout games you would go on a fetch quest gladly because you are rebuilding Liberty Prime for the Brotherhood of Steel, or you are gaining a new ally in the fight for Hoover Dam, etc, etc. You have an emotional investment in the factions or individuals that you are doing the quest for. The main story in Fallout 76 is pretty lackluster. Michael and I focused mainly on the main quest for most of our time, and it ain't that great so far. It's really hard to care about what's happening, and so much of it feels kind of pointless. We've spent so much time just repairing five generators, or collecting five of these, or using a certain item with no compelling plot or characters to tie it all together, it just feels pretty monotonous. On the other hand, we did start focusing on side quests, and there was a really good series of side quests we did, a series that we will have a guide on soon, and it involved a secret organization and a mansion with a secret entrance and a cool enough story. Mind you, it would be even cooler if this secret faction was actually alive and it wasn't just holotapes, but still, it was pretty fun. It might not have been that amazing by Fallout standards, but by comparison to what we had been doing in the main story, it was fantastic. However, this could be a game highlight, as a few of the other side quests we did were pretty basic and not that interesting. Not necessarily bad, just not great either. Most of Fallout 76 quests seem to involve a pretty basic formula. Get the quest from a holotape or robot, then kill the creature, or build or retrieve an item. For example, the event quest I did today was simply killing a few Mylurks, picking up three toxic barrels, and throwing them into a dumpster. It's not exactly enthralling stuff. This is not the game for you if you care mostly about good storytelling. It is the complete opposite of a good storytelling rule, show don't tell. Everything is a holotape monologue or robot batting orders at you, at least so far, but considering we have played 15 hours of the main quest, I think it's pretty safe to assume the rest will play out very much like the beginning. I could be wrong, it could get better, but still 15 hours is a big slog through to get to the good parts if they exist. Now, Fallout games, and I guess Bethesda games in general, have always been credited for environmental storytelling, but honestly, I feel that most of this environmental storytelling that is professed as fantastic fantastic is actually just notes and holotapes, which really isn't as environmental as you would think. You didn't have to come to the conclusion on your own based on the environment, you just read a thing or listened to something that told you what happened. Most environmental storytelling isn't really as much storytelling as it is atmosphere and world building. We came across a skeleton in an electric chair at one point in the game, and it's like, yeah, cool, this guy got electrocuted a bit to death by like raiders or something, but it's not as much as a story as it is a set piece. I'm no way shitting on this. I enjoy it quite a lot actually, but it's more atmosphere creation, not really a good piece of storytelling. 
However, like I was saying before about the physical world, it really is sensational. The atmosphere is often really captivating, but it just makes me wish again that this was an actual Fallout game with a story and more meaningful quests with NPCs and towns, an RPG with choices and meaningful experiences. Regardless of whether you agree what we would consider environmental storytelling or atmosphere, the point we are trying to make here is that the main story, at least so far, isn't really super fun to experience. Obviously for anyone who loves RPGs with choices and role-playing, this game won't be your cup of tea. You can't really shape the world in any meaningful way. If you nuke an area, it magically becomes unnuked later. If you kill a bunch of dudes, they respawn 20 minutes later. Nothing is permanent, therefore none of your actions have any real impact on the world. Which I understand it is this way because it's a shared multiplayer world, but that's kind of the problem. The whole multiplayer thing has diminished the core Fallout experience quite a bit. And it's not like this couldn't have been a game like Fallout 4, but with co-op and a story that facilitated that so you and your three friends could leave Vault 76 and interact with an awesome world filled with interesting NPCs, factions and raiders and stuff like that. You could have had a real impact on the world. Perhaps in your game you joined up with your friends and two of them ended up taking a darker path joining the raiders while you and another friend joined the living responders and you could actually fight or something. I don't know, that's just random spitballing, but it could have easily been a co-op RPG like Divinity Original Sin 2, but obviously in the first person shooter style that we are familiar with. Something else that doesn't help the game is the lack of human NPCs. There are no societies, which to me at least are one of the most interesting things about Fallout, seeing how societies have formed after an apocalypse. Caesar's Legion, the NCR, the Great Khans, the formation of Megaton or Diamond City. None of this kind of stuff is in Fallout 76. I understand Bethesda was going for the whole every single human is a real person, but it doesn't feel that special. I don't think the game would have been hurt by having actual human NPCs. NPCs. Like if the responders were a living faction with towns and where there were raider towns and even just living raider enemies. Like you can see their corpses but they're all dead. Like the whole scorched thing is all right but they're just diseased humans that have gone mad. It's like why couldn't they have just been raiders with differing gangs to give them some variety with different themes instead of just having these samey looking insane enemy scorched. And dialogue is no excuse because they had to record dialogue for every single holotape and robot dialogue, so it could have just been for an NPC human. The PvP is pretty fun in this game, but makes up a small portion of the game. Early on we found more players, but as everyone levels and spreads out over the map, it's rare to see someone, and usually you just walk on past because you are busy doing a quest and them as well. The wanted feature is cool, but to be honest, we've only seen a wanted player once or twice because, once again, I feel a lot of players Player interaction is far and few between unless they are your friends you are coordinating with. And then there's the quest spam that you get. Fallout 76 makes Preston Garvey seem so refreshing. I wish I was being asked to defend the settlement. While trying to follow the main quest, we got so many other quests that when you open your quest log, you're like, what the hell is this? You walk into a new area, get hit with three misks, a daily, an event, which you then have to go and uncheck all the time in your pit boy. An easy enough fix, I guess could be that the quests do not immediately begin as active but just go into your quest log. It'd be less annoying that way. But let's just break it up for a second. I know this may seem very full on and not a very positive impression, but be aware it's only because we're being super critical on purpose and holding it up to the quality of previous games. Of course we have to recognize that this is a different type of game, but still, Fallout 76 can be fun. It often is, although I wouldn't honestly recommend it solo because then it just feels like a bad Fallout game. Co-op is the way it is meant to be played. I often find that sometimes just exploring the physical world and killing stuff and finding stuff with friends is, is where most of the fun is at. Just most of the time, don't go into the game expecting extremely well-crafted quests or story. If you don't care for those and just want to explore with friends, then I think you can definitely have fun for sure. I do want to talk about the lore, but first I think we should talk about some of the miscellaneous stuff first. So let's start with legendary weapons and uniques. There are unique weapons, same as Fallout 4. We've only found two truly unique items, a dress and a jewel that you can wear with a unique model. There are also many more weapon models in general though, so it's a little bit different. We also have found unique weapons in the same way Fallout 4 uniques were just the same model as a normal version of the weapon, but with a legendary effect. But they still exist. 
released, which is a good thing. We were a little worried about that before 76's release. We have only received truly unique gear from quests though, not sure if you can just find them as set pieces out in the world yet. Weapons are also leveled, which to be honest, I'm not a big fan of. It kind of seems unnecessary to me. It's never been a part of Fallout games before, and the stronger weapons will always be stronger. For example, the theoretical level 20 version of a combat rifle will be stronger than the level 20 version of a 10mm pistol, but it will be the same difference at the level 50 version of a 10mm pistol and level 50 version of a combat rifle. I don't know. I can see some reasons as to why they did it, but it just doesn't seem that needed, and it's kind of annoying because sometimes you complete a whole quest that you were a suitable level for, it wasn't really a hard quest or anything, but then you are given a reward that you won't be able to use for another 5 or even 10 levels sometimes. Another little thing that people have been talking about is inventory space and stash space, which to be honest, I actually haven't been having a problem with. I'm not even a strength focused character or anything, I just have 5 strength. I think you just have to be careful with your inventory management. Just some tips for you, I noticed that ammo has weight and when I got rid of a bunch of missiles which are surprisingly heavy that I'd been carrying, I cleared a ton of space. Also scrap your junk. I had been collecting junk and storing it in its raw form, like telephones or typewriters, and then I went to my stash, got all my junk out, scrapped it all, and it made a difference of 50 pounds. So you may have less space because you are carrying around all this junk in its raw form. Also you just have to not hoard everything you find. On another note, I also like camps. It's really fun to set up with your friends and make a temporary base and staging area for all your missions. Definitely use this system and move it around. It's very useful. You can also fast travel to it for free, so I'd recommend setting it up when you enter a new area with a bunch of quests in close proximity. You can also access your stash here and dump all your junk nice and easily. The perk cards and build system is also interesting, and I really do like the perk cards. The variety is nice and there's a lot of potential for interesting specialization. One one-handed melee, pistols, your typical rifleman and stuff, but for a character who isn't melee, there is still benefit to strength perk cards like Bandolier, which at two ranks, which is the max rank, it reduces ammo weight by 90%. However, just intuitively, I have a feeling that hyper-specialized special stats is not the way to go, except perhaps for melee builds. At least this is how I feel at the moment. I feel like having averaged special stats with maybe one or two focuses will be more beneficial as there are just some perk cards that are too useful to give up. Simply put, if you only invested into Endurance, say, you'll never get to use some of the awesome perk cards in the other six stats to their full potential with multiple ranks. If you don't know what build you want to play yet, I would definitely suggest aiming for six in every single stat, which would then allow you to put two rank three cards in each to get a feel for different perks, especially considering that special stat placement is permanent. As far as I'm aware, there are no special stat requirements. The special stat determines the amount of cards you can have, so if you have six percent you can have six rank one cards or two rank three cards or three rank two cards but but the cards you can use aren't dependent on the special stat number as such so you're not locked out of perks like Fallout 4. Also I feel builds will be far less based on special stat distribution but more so on perk card allotment. For example you might have a character with a more evenly spread stat distribution but you can swap out a variety of perk cards to make different loadouts to play different styles. I have a feeling versatility may be more important important than straight up powerhousing in one area, but then again, I'd have to experiment more to know for sure. Having strong specialization might work really well in a big team though, we'll have to see what happens through more playtime. Last point before I get onto the behemoth that is the lore discussion, the enemies. There are many cool creatures and enemies in the game, but you want to know the problem here? They're actually underused. Most of the places you enter are just filled with scorched or super mutants. Sometimes robots and mole men and ghouls, but I really think some of the locations should have been swapped up for variety. Include some more of the awesome creatures that they've made. Even when we enter the big swamp area, we saw some cool new enemies, but once again, a whole bunch of super mutants. It can get a bit stale fighting them over and over. Just use the enemies that you've made. There's plenty of them and they're really cool. So as you probably well know here at Fudge Muppet, we are really into lore. Mainly Elder Scrolls, but other games like Witcher, Fallout, and other fantasy worlds in books and stuff like that. But regardless, my problem with Fallout 76 is that it has thrown a lot of lore out the window and has made some very contrived explanations as an excuse to bring back familiar factions and enemies. For example, the Brotherhood of Steel at this time is a newly formed small number isolationist faction on the west coast of the United States, and they extend their reach all the way to West Virginia in the east. 
At first I heard it was some satellite communication deal, but then I played the game and they are actually there, physically, dead, but there. I found barricades with Brotherhood symbols and corpses of Brotherhood members. I don't know the entire story yet, but what I'm getting at, this is super unlikely. An isolationist Western Brotherhood of Steel sends people all the way to West Virginia. It doesn't feel like a decision that the Brotherhood of Steel of Fallout 1 would have made, and that is many years after Fallout 76's Brotherhood. I also think it's lazy that they've just reused Brotherhood of Steel assets from Fallout 4, like clothing. So conveniently, over 100 years prior, the Brotherhood of Steel is wearing the same clothing as they are in Fallout 4 on the East Coast, but they're supposed to be from the West Coast, and I imagine there would be different clothing, but look, regardless, it's just lazy. And what annoys me is that, yes, on a super technical level, it could happen, but it doesn't mean it should, and it's a weak piece of lore that only exists to facilitate them bringing back familiar factions. It is literally lore created for brand recognition. Also, super mutants. I haven't found out as of yet, but I am going to assume these super mutants are from Vault 87, the closest source of super mutants that we know of. There may be some other explanation, I don't know, but anyways, in terms of a consistent, believable world, if super mutants had spread from Vault 87 to West Virginia, dominating much of the land after only 20 something years, how is it that they have not conquered all of the United States 200 years later in the other Fallout games? I get it, they're a staple enemy, but it starts to just feel a bit dumb, you know, where every bloody state has its own brand of super mutant or super mutants that have run cross state. Next up, we'll have Fallout China with Chinese FEV and the Brotherhood of Steel has flown all the way to China. It just seems unbelievable. I really feel that they don't care about the lore anymore and simply shape it to fit the gameplay. And internal consistency is important for a good game world or any made up world for that matter. People often say, oh, who cares? It's all made up anyhow. But the way these worlds truly grab you in and make you feel like you are living in them is because they are so internally consistent, they feel believable. The rules of the world all make sense in the world's context. It's very cohesive. On the other hand, there are some really cool creatures and stuff aesthetically, and I don't mind these as much because they are really cool, but some seem a little bit convenient, like all the West Virginian folklore is brought to life with the power of FEV and a little radiation. I'm sure they have a relatively decent explanation as to why the Wendigo is real and the Mothman and the Grafton monster, etc. But still, it's a little bit convenient. Then again, I really can't fault them on this because the creatures are really, really cool and it does add to the land and the culture of West Virginia. And importantly, it does not make previous lore redundant or stupid. I guess they get a pass on that. I also don't get while after only a few decades the place is super lush. Like the water is irradiated, the animals are all mega irradiated, but the plants who drink in the irradiated water are completely fine. I don't really get it. Radiation strong enough to give an opossum three heads, but the trees are unaffected and lush as ever. But I've noticed some other dumb shit, like the unique cannon broadsider from Fallout 4, a very specific custom weapon on the USS Constitution, is now a standard weapon that I found in a chest. Like, what the hell, but whatever. It seems like overall that the lore is built around the gameplay, not the other way around. I just really wish Bethesda would care more about the lore and stop screwing with it. Hashtag pray for Elder Scrolls 6. So there is my little lore rant, but overall I have to say Fallout 76 is probably not the game you are looking for if you are a super hardcore Fallout fan. If you are expecting any real role playing facilitated by gameplay mechanics or any real world impact or interesting story, you're out of luck. If you're looking for a fun time with friends, killing awesome enemies, exploring neat environments with awesome atmosphere, then you will enjoy Fallout 76. The game is fun enough, but I don't think it will be everyone's cup of tea. And it does frustrate me a bit because there is loads of potential for a co-op RPG. A co-op RPG with real role playing and consequence would be awesome to the tune of Divinity Original Sin 2. I don't understand why they didn't craft a Fallout RPG that was co-op. Like, imagine this. You customize your character along with your friends, up to four players, as you start a game together. This game would work very well solo or co-op. You're in Vault 76, 
Reclamation Day is happening and you are having a big ass party, interacting with all the members of the vault, getting a feel for the controls and all the little bits and pieces. All the dialogue from the player characters would be text, like it was in the old games, and multiple players can enter conversations together, interacting with each other, of course, that would be also in text. In preparation for the next day where Vault 76 will go out and reclaim the world, you have to take a small exam determining what role you will perform on the outside. This is where you like pick your special stats and ideally we'd love to have have traits. Anyways, next day the vault opens and you venture out into the wasteland with all of your fellow vault dwellers, NPCs, and co-op players alike. You help the dwellers of Vault 76 set up a base, perhaps fight off some beasts, introduce the players to gunplay, and they would perhaps see some new creatures, like an attack by a Scorch Beast, which would be a mad set piece, and the Scorch Beast decimates the Vault 76 dwellers, but through combined effort you finally beat it. The base is mostly destroyed and the Overseer decides she should retreat the population into Vault 76. However, she asks for volunteers to venture out and learn all they can with multiple objectives like reconnecting with nearby vaults, finding any civilization, securing areas for settlement, and making them defensible for Vault 76 dwellers so they can truly reclaim America. Now you and your friends have multiple objectives, the main one being really to get out into the world and explore. Now the premise is set and you can go and explore the world that is out there and the world is really good. Government remnants could be living in White Springs, some of the towns could have actual inhabitants. It would be interesting to meet plenty of pre-war ghouls and perhaps even pre-war elderly people living in towns. It would give a different feel because the Great War was only a few decades away. There should be plenty of raiders and raider gangs as separate factions which you could even join and end up betraying Vault 76 perhaps. Maybe you and your co-op buddies could go different paths, one supporting a raider gang and the other joining the responders who would be living in this version and they face off in a quest. Might be a little tricky, but it sounds cool. Anyways, this way there could be actual quests that aren't just holotapes and robots, and you would still be connected to all of the factions and the characters, and there would be a sense of place. Keep all the cool creatures and environments and all the weapons. The swamp would be home to some really cool, like, hillbilly-like cults with some occult stuff going on, like a real point lookout kind of feel. There was just a lot of potential for this kind of game. I'd be keen to maybe make some kind of ideal Fallout 76 like we did for Fallout 4, Elder Scrolls 6, and we even made a theoretical Fallout New Orleans based on the rumor. So if you'd like to see a ideal Fallout 76 video by us, then let us know down in the description. Remember guys, this was our experience with 76. You guys may have enjoyed it or may not agree with everything we said. Take it into the comments and we can get some discussion going. But if you are a fan of Fallout 3, 4 and New Vegas, you love RPGs and lore and role playing, and you came and asked me, should I get Fallout 76? I would probably say don't bother. However, if you're looking for a fun way to spend the holiday with friends or you just like exploring an expansive apocalyptic world, using cool weapons, seeing new creatures and soaking in the atmosphere, then I would say for sure, hit the game up. We are still playing it and intend to fully explore it to the max. I feel like once we have an even better grasp and have seen everything the game has to offer, we can truly come to our most complete review. But until then, based on the 20 plus hours we have played, these were our current thoughts. Guys, thanks so much for watching. It means a lot to us and subscribe for more Fallout 76 content. We are really giving the game its full go. We don't want to just play the beta and go, nah. So expect to see content from us. Perhaps there will be some awesome quests and things like that that will make it super worthwhile. We'll see in time. Thanks again, guys. Social media links are in the description. My name is Scott, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.